Okay, so we have Reynard here um, to answer our questions. Hi, Reynard, how are you today? Hi, I'm doing good. Okay, good, good, good. So, Reynard, can you introduce yourself a little bit? So, I'm uh, Reynard, uh, Reynard Rashad, and I'm a first year at uh, BPGIS and the University of Scuba, but I just program in global issues. Okay, and uh, where are you from, Reynard? I am from Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, how long has it been since you've come to uh, University of Scuba? Well, since I am a first year, then I will be, it's been six months and it is my first time in Japan. So I've, mm. it's really nice so far. Okay, good, good, good. Um, so Reynard, I, I just wanted to ask you this question first, but uh, you are a student at the bachelor's program in global issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to call it call it BPGI. But before mm -hmm. we start talking about the course, what were your favorite subject uh, when you were in, you know, school, like uh, grade school, junior high, senior high, what, whatever? As a kid, I've always been interested mostly in um, subjects that are related to human beings in general, and not like biology. But I guess I have I was a very social science kid, so social studies and also history was something mm -hmm. that was very close to my heart. Uh, right. It's very interesting to learn about behaviors and events that have never occurred to me or were never around me, mm. and I've never mm. got to experience it. So learning mm. about them, it, it feels very, it feels like I'm exploring the world, essentially, without ever really going anywhere. Mm. So you've always been curious about humans, human mm. beings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it was very interesting for me because uh, I've all, only lived in like a small part of, uh, of of this one country where there, mm. are, there are many other countries, 196 of them. So yeah, it is very nice to learn about these new things. Okay, okay. thank you for that. And now uh, in your words, how would you describe your program, BPGI? It is a very broad program. So it doesn't really discriminate between whether, whether you're a social science kid, a STEM kid, a humanities kid or anything. It is something that is for you. Um, uh, actually, in our in our batch, there is someone who likes marine biology. While there's another person that actually just likes economics and my um, immigration. Mm -hmm. So it is very wide, and uh, a lot of the times you would learn about new stuff that you otherwise wouldn't have learned about it yourself. Mm -hmm. And actually, you might find something that you might like essentially without without ever you ever knowing, because we learn stuff about uh, waste management. African music, even forestry. So it is very a wide touching subject and you are gonna find something that you like eventually. Wow. Did you just say African music? Yeah, we actually that we actually had a class regarding African music, specifically from the country of Capo Verde. And it was mm. very interesting to learn about. Within the context of your course? Yes, it was actually in the context and it was an intensive course actually. So mm. we had multiple professors coming over from different universities as well, actually with their own specialty and teach, uh, give us a, um, a presentation about their specialty, forestry, waste management, et cetera, et cetera. I see. What was the title of the course that you're referring to? Well, the title itself was Literacy in Global Issues. And it was mainly about all the other wide ranging subjects and where they had intensive courses, sometimes on the weekends, and have professors come over to give us a lecture about um, their speciality. Interesting. That's that's really awesome. Let's let's talk a little bit more about other courses uh, in your course in your major. Um, mm -hmm. the, you know, when we were preparing for this meeting, you mentioned that you had courses in human rights law and also world food and agriculture. So can you tell us a little bit about those courses? First, about human the human rights law course. Well, uh, with human rights law, it was very much discussion based. The professor of the the course itself is actually a faculty member of BPGI, hence why I took the course. And also, I sort of had an interest in human rights in general, so that, um, that was perfect for me. Uh, it was very discussion based, as I said, and a lot of the times, it's not uh, it's a lot of arguments between uh, people, not just in the from the international students but also a lot of Japanese students actually joined the class because the that, uh, professor itself, who is, it is a, who is a member of the BPGI faculty, is actually quite open with having um, 
interactions between Japanese students and also international students. And you get all of these perspectives from different people and different backgrounds regarding current topics like abortion, um, gender rights, and whatnot. And it is very interesting. The arguments are never um, heated in a, in a sense where it is it always provides a new aspect whenever you, you are um, joining the argument. But um, it is it doesn't get to a point where it would turn into a fight. So it was it is mm -hmm. very civilized, and you do get a, lot, a different take on different issues. Now that's that's very uh, good. Uh, I mean, comforting to know that you can have like a civil conversation about but potentially uh, sensitive topics. Um, mm -hmm. For the second course that I want to talk about is the wood, World Food and Agriculture course. What was it like? The World Food and Agriculture course was a lot more traditional in a sense where it was lecture based most of the time. And it was a, mainly the professor giving lectures on a, every single period. And in the end, we did have a final examination where we had to essentially um, answer questions about regarding the lectures that we had given. Although that in that class, um, compared to the previous class, it is open to exchange students. So a lot of the exchange students from different countries would attend this course. And when whenever we uh, when we had a group assignment with them, you actually it's actually pretty interesting to actually hear their background and how their countries relate to agriculture in general. And it is also it is also it provides a new uh, a space a new space for students to actually talk to them and maybe maybe make friends. Thank you for that. Um, you're studying in Japan, of course, and uh, but my first question is. Why Japan? Originally, I had um, an interest in anime when I was a kid, and that wasn't the reason why um, I wanted to study in Japan because I didn't expect that. Only the reason why I actually took Japanese language courses. And so, after two years of that, I didn't really expect to be learning here, studying here. But uh, my mother actually per pursued me to actually study overseas and looking at potential universities. Japan, we think, was the right fit because uh, compared to English speaking countries in Japan, uh, uh, well, it is very cheap. The living cost in here is cheaper than the, uh, those compared to uh, English speaking countries in general. Mm -hmm. So uh, we want we wanted a higher quality education um, that is not uh, from my own country mm -hmm. and with the same with the same quality, but with cheaper uh, living costs, essentially. Mm -hmm. So you wanted like world-class education, but at a reasonable cost. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And secondly, you study at the University of Tsukuba. Um, yeah. Why did you choose Tsukuba? Mainly uh, those two reasons. Uh, Tsukuba was the top, one of the top 10 universities in Japan. So it was very much uh, a dream, I guess. Essentially, it was my very, very first choice. It was either I go to Tsukuba or I don't go to Japan in general, because um, I wouldn't really be satisfied with going to other universities that are ranked lower. Right. right. Um, and also, the second would be uh, compared to the other top ten universities, the living cost is actually quite cheap uh, here, actually uh, in Tsukuba, actually, because um, I guess it is, it is, it isn't located in a city where it, the, living, the the cost of rent and all are actually high. So that was one thing. And another thing I guess I would like to add is that um, but, but, uh, Tsukuba itself, I guess it provided a social a science subject. Well, it, was, it isn't really social science in a way, but we, uh, global issues itself is quite open to a lot of things. And for someone who hasn't really decided what I wanted to be as at the time, it was perfect for me because uh, I, I wanted to explore a lot more and with the interdisciplinary uh, program like Global Issues BPGI, it was perfect. Okay, great. Thanks very much for that. Um, all right, I, I want to move on to something else. What did you do to prepare for admissions? Well, well the, um, the first part of the admission actually was that I had to write a personal statement. And I it was quite tough because oh, I've never written. So I had to go back and forth with both my counselor, my parents, for about a month, I would say. And after that, then it was time, high time for me to actually submit it. Although I did have difficulties as well with 
um, documents and how I can uh, I had to properly send them because again it is my first time and a lot of the times my documents were not in English so I had to find ways like finding an official translator to translate them and that took a while and I should have prepared in it more in advance in hindsight. So some documents needed to be translated into Japanese. And not not Japanese and necessarily since global issues and a lot of the programs in scuba uh, international programs are as uh, being taught in English, you just have right. to translate English into English. So from your language to uh, English. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. What kind of documents needed to be translated? Well, documents such as um, income statement, uh, birth certificate, and also your high school graduate graduation certificate well not necessarily high school because mine was different it was in english but my um elementary school was also i think needed at some point so i had to translate that as well hmm. okay and you needed to attest the translation as well right yeah i needed to attest the tr translation because so that's why i had to go to a certified translator mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think i could have just translated it off of google it needs to be confirmed and that the contents are true right mm -hmm. so i hope that this is a, a hint uh, for possible applicants to university of Tsukuba. yeah thank you for the information mm -hmm. you passed the first stage and then you were invited to a zoom interview i believe yeah um so what was the interview process like the interview process was actually quite nervous because i had uh not, not really a sense of what to expect and i just kept up with the latest uh, news and issues um, regarding like global issues essentially so that I am well prepared. During the interview itself I was very nervous and I actually have this habit of talking really fast when I'm nervous so I, I in hindsight I wish I presented myself a bit better uh, in a sense where I calmed myself down but I did get the points that I wanted to uh, lay out to them and thank, unfor unfortunately I made it here so my, I guess my advice is just to keep calm whenever you are in the interview so, so that you'll actually get your points there. To stay calm. And also you read newspapers like every day. You, you, you made yourself uh, aware of global issues. Yeah, I guess that, um, essentially, I, not really, a, not, obviously not newspapers, but a lot of news articles every day. And mm -hmm. also maybe, this was personally, and, uh, we don't really have to is that i actually just sort of research like how the un works and like it's different bodies like the unicef uh, unesco etc cetera, etc cetera. oh so you start you looked up international agencies such as united nations mm -hmm. and 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 the sub agencies such as unesco and so on yeah because i had i, I wasn't quite familiar with it and i, I had a sense that they might help me mm -hmm. while well, during right. their interview. okay great great um okay so uh moving on to some more life stuff yeah mm -hmm. do you have a scholarship uh yeah i received a scholarship before enrolled uh, before enrolling and i just it just finished uh, by march of this year actually mm -hmm. so i did get a scholarship for a, a little while mm -hmm. okay um and what was the nature of the scholarship can you tell us a little bit about that it was a 40, 48,000 a month stipend. So mm -hmm. for our six months, it is it is by just so actually. And for every month you get 48,000. And for me, I was honored that scholarship uh, once I enrolled in the university. So that was during October until March. So six okay. months. Okay. And what was the application process like for the just so scholarship? Well, during the admission itself, I stated that I needed I would would be, would be very nice if I had financial assistance because uh, my parents also have to, has to finance my younger brother mm -hmm. who is also going to come uh, go to university quite soon, and so I I, I just had to I told them uh, that of how I'm planning to uh, support myself during these four years, and I mm -hmm. did say that I was planning to apply for a scholarship, mm -hmm. and the, BP, the BPJ office actually took note of that, and they. Before I enrolled, uh, they notified me that I have, uh, they pre-selected me for this scholarship, mm -hmm. fortunately. And I'm very grateful for that, actually. Mm -hmm. They were very helpful with that. Okay, that's great. What's the cost of living in Tsukuba? So living in Tsukuba itself, 
it does vary between per people to people. A lot of students I hear, they spend a lot less than what I do in groceries. So for me personally, it was around 90,000 to 100,000 a month, including okay. rent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, uh, I live in the university's dorm in Global Village, and that uh, including electricity fees would cost around forty thousand, depending on the season. Um, it might it might uh, might be higher a little bit when you're in, during winter because you need heating. Um, the rest mainly is like for entertainment and groceries. I I've seen a lot of my friends spend a lot less, but for me personally, I I prefer having the full nutrition every time I have a meal and every time I cook, mm -hmm. I do cook a lot. So mm -hmm. uh, that sort of made my cost a little bit higher, but mm -hmm. it should be around 90,000 to 100,000. Okay, great. I, I think we, I forgot to mention to our audience, uh, should have talked about this in the beginning, but you are in Tokyo right now. Yes, Tell us why you are in Tokyo. So with uh, VPGI, I would, I would like to kind of promote here, but with VPGI, is, we're the, the only program in Tsukuba where they have an exchange term, and it is in International Kishin University in Tokyo. So in, our, in your first year, you'll be sent here for about three months, actually, and get to experience essentially like uh, being in another university. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's it like in Tokyo? Oh, uh, well... Uh, you do get to actually meet a lot of new people because the dorm that you're in are for exchange students. And so a lot of the times they are from America, from Denmark, from other, a lot of these other countries and you get to meet these new interesting people. Other than that, um, the campus life is very nice actually. The, since it is around springtime, a lot of sakuras are actually quite blooming. And so, the you can when you, once you enter it is it looks very nice plus it's mm -hmm. also very close to tokyo so whenever you want to um travel around it is a lot cheaper than going from tsukuba itself however i mean i haven't classes haven't started yet and i do already start to miss tsukuba in terms of like the people there because the community is very quite well knit and i kind of miss that mm -hmm. from here okay and what's the cost of living like in tokyo uh from what you can tell so far um well the cost of living in terms of the fee for the dorm is mm -hmm. maybe a bit more expensive than uh, than that of global village gv uh, because for gv it's around forty thousand plus electricity while on um, uh, you are staying here for only exactly three months and you have to pay around about two hundred and twenty two thousand in total um uh, up front but uh, i guess like if i were to average it it would be seventy six thousand a month so almost double mm -hmm. the cost of global village that is quite pricey in, in my opinion, but mm. in terms of living cost itself, mm -hmm. uh, it isn't much different than it is in Scuba, where in Scuba I would give a range of about 90,000 to 100,000 a month. Mm. For uh, in here, maybe like what's more, a bit more expensive might be um, the cost of, let's say, food, like in groceries and supermarkets. So it would be maybe around 100,000 to 110,000 a month. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, got it. This is like the last question, but when we were, you know, preparing for this interview, I remember that you talk, you said that you talked to somebody who wants to become a marine biologist. Mm -hmm. um, so can you tell us a little bit about the interaction you, you had with that student? Oh, actually, uh, it is very interesting because my batch is actually quite diverse in terms of perspectives, because we have someone who wants to be a marine biologist, someone who's very interested, passionate about economics, and another one who is very actually interested in immigration. So all, a lot of these different uh, passions interacting together provides a lot of interesting arguments and discussions. A lot of the times um, when we have a certain topic, like certain trending news topic that to discuss about, uh, we would provide our own perspective on the matter with our own interests. And you actually wouldn't really get from uh, but by researching about it yourself, because there are, uh, whether you like it or not, there are biases within you, and you would tend to pay attention to information that is suited to your interest. Global issues, it's a lot different from other programs in a sense that we don't share a certain theme that we are very much passionate in. Let's say with engineering, with engineering you kind of have math that sort of ties you together, but that does have its downside in a sense where we actually are pretty um, different and we provide different perspectives. And it is, in a way, 
I would say that it is kind of representative of the real world and international bodies like the UN work. Whereas a lot of the times their opinions are never wrong. It's not wrong. It is just from different perspectives, from different backgrounds. Hence why they come to that conclusion. It is very much like, a, uh, I would say, like a, a mini UN where a lot of people can really agree on a certain solution of a certain problem. So it is, it, it is very much, I guess, uh, poetic in a way that it is pretty representative of what we actually are. Because we, we are just different people from different backgrounds and global issues and its students in it very much represent that. Great. Before we go, I, I just wanted to ask you one, 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 one fin final, final question. I, I promise it's going to be the final, but <laughs> what is your career plan um, uh, mm. in, in the future? Well, yeah. What do you want to do? Yeah. Originally, before coming into the program, I wanted to be an ambassador to Indonesia for, for another country. That was my original plan, and I, th and I thought that global issues were perfect for that. But now, after actually having other classes, I actually started to realize other interests, such as spatial planning, because uh, looking back, I want, I've always wanted to get back to the community and in some, in some way or another. But uh, I guess I would uh, not really a science kid, so I couldn't really go for medicine or that kind of thing. Spatial planning was very much new to me because I never thought that this field exists. I kind of had an interest in it where you actually sort of I guess rearrange cities to make it more walkable, bikeable, and management uh, waste management is a lot better. I wanted to do. I wanted to essentially have an influence on that in my own country. So hopefully, I uh, I can uh, pro provide that to the back to the community by essentially just uh, learning more about it through this program and also hopefully masters. And that's why I kind of want to work in a, a governmental body so that i can have that influence that's great yeah i wish you the best of luck and uh it's exactly what what the program is aiming to do so i'm really happy to hear that um Reynard, thank you so much and uh best of luck okay and uh, thanks for joining us uh take care thank you